Well, if the polls hold, he could be your next premier. UCP leader Jason Kenney is steering the opposition through a high stakes session at the Alberta Legislature this noon hour. Joining me live in studio, thanks for being here. Thanks for the invite. I know it's a busy time and you're and you're here and then you got to <laughs> get back to question period. So we'll get through as much as we can. Then I get to ask the questions. Right? <laughs> and and we've, we've seen that be, uh, be busy on both sides. Let's start with uh, the story we've been following this week. Now former NDP MLA Robin Luff out with a series of allegations, uh, mm -hmm. bullying, intimidation, and this sense of keeping MLAs in line. How does that work within your own party, that sense of directing? And, and do you think MLAs should be able to speak their mind and vote their conscience? I do think they should be able to sp uh, vote their conscience, uh, with one exception, when the government's bringing a budget bill forward uh, and it's based on their platform commitment. There's, I think, a reasonable expectation that they'll show confidence in the government. That's what our Westminster parliamentary system is based on. But whenever it gets to matters of, of deep personal conviction, conscience, um, yeah, I do think there, there must be free votes um, to represent your constituents or, or your deeply held conscientious convictions that you've run on. Uh, and that's part of our democracy. Um, to be honest with you, and I'm not sure how that's working in the NDP caucus. The way we try to do it is to work as a team as much as possible, but on issues that people really feel they need to vote freely, they're welcome to. Um, and, you know, they can express their own views, but, you know, let's keep it um, within reason uh, because when you run for a party, you're running as a team member. I want to ask you as well about another issue that keeps cropping up. You uh, booted someone from your own party last week. He worked on one of your campaigns, and then there were these allegations, these links made to white supremacists. And you've said, you know, there's no place for hatred, no place for bigotry, yet it seems like these issues keep cropping up. Can you tell me why? Well, I, I, w I don't think they really keep cropping up. Well, there's I think a number of examples, well, right? The Soldiers of Odin case, there, there was a member who'd made some homophobic remarks on social media. So there's, let's there's put this in perspective. In a few. Um, we're, I'm leading what, what is happily the largest political party in mm -hmm. Canada. We have over 130,000 members. And I think we've had... Uh, like a handful, I don't know, five, four or five people uh, that have been identified as having extreme or unacceptable views, and we remove them. That's a fraction of a fraction of a percent. Like that is, a, you can't uh, taint a party of 130,000 people, which is supported according to all of the polls by a majority of Albertans, because a couple of bad apples end up. The, the key thing is, is that we have to be vigilant against uh, with anybody who does not share our belief in human dignity, in, Can in Canadian pluralism, in equality before the law. Let me give you a counterexample. On Saturday, we had the largest nomination votes in Alberta political history for Northeast Calgary ridings, 6,400 voters. I was there, I would say over 90% of them were probably Canadians of visible minority backgrounds, and they elected as candidates uh, a Muslim, a, uh, a Hindu, and two Sikh Albertans. That's a real reflection of today's United Conservative Party. And I know you have uh, support from all corners of the province and all different types of populations and all different types of people um, elected. You have said that you will try to vet future party members. Is that realistic? You know, for some of those extremist views yeah. that, that, that have come I don't up. want to look at, we, there's no way that we can, <laughs> it's impossible for us to go and do a analysis of the social media histories of 130,000 party members. Sure. That's not the goal. But what we will do is, is come up with a list of people who are known to be associates of extremist organizations. So if they ever apply for a membership in the future to create mischief, it, that will uh, generate, it'll be flagged and then we can do an assessment and we can disqualify them if they don't share our belief in values like human dignity and pluralism. Uh, you have been called uh, the premier presumptive, the premier in waiting. Does that shape how you conduct yourself in the House? And I'm thinking of, uh, you know, four years ago, the PCs swept four by-elections. It looked like it was their election right. to lose, and then we all know what happened. The NDP swept into power in a huge orange wave. How do you take that and and use that to inform how you're conducting yourself this session? Well, you know, I think the PCs were kicked out of office in part because they became arrogant. They, th they had a sense of entitlement to power. And there was also kind of culture of cronyism that, that started creeping in. And, and people didn't like that. Even if they weren't necessarily voting for the NDP, they wanted to send a message to the PCs. And I totally understand that. In f uh, and so that's why we're trying to correct for that by demonstrating a culture of humility and, and respect. One way we've done so is to ban that annoying practice of desk thumping in the legislature. If people go in and the school groups go up there and they, they, they it's like it, mm -hmm. the teachers are embarrassed because the MLAs are acting much worse than the kids do at school. So I said, let's act like grown ups. Let's be mature about this. Ban the desk thumping, ban heckling. The questions we ask, you can watch it in a question period. They're straightforward. They're not nasty, torqued. And for two and a half 
half years, since I started this project, I have not uttered a single personal attack or criticism against our Premier, who I respect. In fact, I led a standing ovation for her, thanking her for her public service at our founding convention. Sure, we disagree strongly on how to get the economy going again and debt and deficit, carbon tax issues like that, but let's disagree without taking it down into the personal politics. There's one thing uh, for you to say that and hold that policy yourself as the leader and hope to set an example, but we've already seen it getting pretty nasty. How do you think the spring election is going to go in, in terms of that? Can we can go in? Is it going to be about social issues? Is it going to be about the economy? Well, I think it's going to be about the economy. We're um, 184,000 unemployed Albertans, six straight months of growing unemployment, 16% uh, youth unemployment, uh, the largest unemployment outside of Atlantic Canada. Uh, I'll be talking about, and we won't be doing it in a personal way. You know, um, when when I see the, pr the Premier getting uh, vicious attacks uh, from, from social media or anything, I always uh, repudiate those and defend her. And I can tell you, none of the members of my caucus have heckled in the House even since I became leader. So we're... It's a yeah. sort of sense of... Last week, where the media in in the ledge was hoping to ask you some questions about the uh, the links to the the gentleman with the white supremacist website, and and there was this video of yourself skirting skirting away from reporters. Uh, you come from uh, a Stephen Harper a school of politics. You've spent a sense of. In government. Well, I'm here talking to you right now. Yes. I've done thousands of interviews and dozens of, of uh, media uh, uh, news conferences and scrums in the legislature. That particular uh, gotcha video was taken at, I'll tell you exactly when, at uh, 11.48 p.m. Oh, sorry, excuse me, 1.40. Uh, the gotcha moment. They wanted, they wanted to get the picture of me doing a perp walk, but in fact, I had to get in the house to answer questions. I did a scrum with the media yeah. yesterday. I'll continue to be accessible. Well, and I, I wanted to ask because, of course, um, you know, open dialogue and we've, in the media, of course, feel like we have an important role to play. Of course so you do. Absolutely. I, I have so many more questions for you, but we do have to let you uh -oh. get to question period. Yeah, yeah, so I'm not late this time. Right. All right. Jason Kenney, leader of the opposition. Thanks very much. Thanks for the good questions. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it.